So mother had a dream where we were in front of this river that branched out. And then my dad, her husband, whose name is Charles, which means free man, was trying to get with this lady, but she didn't want anything to do with him. So he put her in a chokehold and then snapped her neck. And when we saw this, we were unfazed. We were unbothered. It did not shock us. And then my mom woke up. So God gave me the interpretation of this dream. Okay. So uh, Jesus is a free man. My dad represented Jesus, who is our husband our father our everything and he was trying to wife these people up but they didn't want anything to do with him so now he's about to break that neck all right and when we saw this we were unbothered because we already know that this is about to happen okay god lets his children know what season we are in what season the wicked are in a firstborn donkey may be bought back from the lord by presenting a lamb or young goat in its place but if you do not buy it back you must break its neck exodus 13 13 a donkey was an unclean sacrifice okay they are unclean because they have not died to their flesh. So we represent the lamb. We offered ourselves to buy them back, okay? To bring them to the Lord. We are a living sacrifice. And we offered ourselves by turning the other cheek time in time again so that they could see the love of God working through us there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends John 15 13 we laid down our life for theirs but they didn't want to be bought back okay so now God is about to break that neck that pride all right they wear pride like a jeweled necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty these fat cats <laughs> these garfields have everything their hearts could ever wish for they scoff and speak only evil in their pride they seek to crush others they want to eat you alive they want to devour your flesh like hannibal okay Hello, Clarice. <laughs> okay, they want to eat you like lector. Because you're sweet like nectar. Got the Holy Spirit fruit. Trifecta. <laughs> they boast against the very heavens and their words strut throughout the earth. And so the people are dismayed and confused, drinking in all their words. What does God know? They ask, does the Most High even know what's happening? Psalm 73, 6 through 11. They're about to eat those words. Okay. So then he led me to this scripture right here. Okay. So he kept bringing up this river. Okay. So this is what the Lord said to me. Go and buy a linen loincloth and put it on, but do not wash it. So I bought the loincloth as the Lord directed me and I put it on. Then the Lord gave me another message. Take the linen loincloth you are wearing and go to the Euphrates River. Hide it there in a hole in the rocks. So I went and hid it by the Euphrates as the Lord had instructed me. A long time afterward, the Lord said to me, a long time afterward, the Lord said to me, go back to the Euphrates and get the loincloth I told you to hide there. So I went to the Euphrates and dug it out of the hole 
where I where I had hidden it. But now it was rotting and falling apart. The loincloth was good for nothing. Then I received this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. This shows how I will rot away the pride of Judah and Jerusalem. Okay, he about to break that neck. He's about to rot away that pride. These wicked people refuse to listen to me. They stubbornly follow their own desires and worship other gods. Therefore, they will become like this loincloth, good for nothing. As a loincloth clings to a man's waist, so I created Judah and Israel to cling to me, says the Lord. They were to be my people, my pride, my glory, and honor to my name. But they would not listen to me. So tell them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. May all your jar, may all your jars be filled with wine. And they will reply, of course, jars are made to be filled with wine. Then tell them, no, this is what the Lord means. I will fill everyone in this land with drunkenness from the king sitting on David's throne to the priests and the prophets, right down to the common people of Jerusalem. I will smash them against each other, even parents against children says the Lord. I will not let my pity or mercy or compassion keep me from destroying them. Jeremiah 13, 1 through 14. See, they've been getting hit with these plagues like, oh, that, that, that was just a little speed bump. <laughs> Nothing we can't handle. Okay. But something really big is about to happen. All right. Out of nowhere. The godly may trip seven times, but they will get up again. But one disaster is enough to overthrow the wicked. Proverbs 24, 16. So let's read Exodus 13, 13 again. A firstborn donkey may be bought back from the Lord by presenting a lamb or young goat in his place. But if you do not buy it back, you must break its neck. Since they didn't want to be bought back, okay, the death angel is about to come over the land and kill the firstborns, okay, who do not have the blood on their doorpost. He's coming to destroy them. Okay, break that neck, that pride. So pray that in their brokenness, they call out to the Lord. Okay, that they call out to God. God is not playing. So pray for these people. I love y'all. Talk to you later.